today I want to talk about something connected to mealtime. Surprise, surprise. Um, you know, I, I want you to imagine with me that you have decided to try something new at dinner. It's a new recipe, a new, a new food item, I don't know, something new. You found it from a friend or a cookbook or online somewhere and you're excited to give this a try. And you've put in the time and you've put in the energy and you've been really thoughtful about this or maybe not maybe you haven't even been thoughtful but you just want to try it anyway and you're doing it on a whim totally fine um, but maybe you're feeling a little bit excited about this maybe because you're interested in trying it the problem with doing something like this of course is that it can be met with hesitation by your kids or your family hesitation at best or outright criticism at worst. Ew, what is that? Gross, I don't want to eat that. This does not feel good when you've put the time into trying something new and it, um, you know, it makes you not want to put yourself out there like this again in the future. So you tend to not want to try doing these new things again. The solution, my solution, when this happens, and actually in advance of this happening, my solution to this idea that you put something out there that is met with hesitation or criticism, my solution is to ask for feedback early and often. What do I mean by that? I mean literally saying to your family, hey, I have decided to try this new thing tonight and tonight at dinner, I want your feedback. I want you to tell me what you think about this. I'm Even if this isn't true, say, I'm not so sure about this new recipe and I'd like to know what you think. Um, what does this do? It does a couple of things. One, it lets your kids know and frankly, anyone else in your family, parents, siblings, husband, partner, wife, lets them know that you care about what they think and that you are willing to hear their feedback and make adjustments on it. And that in turn builds trust between the two of you and it builds confidence in your kids being able to say, you know what, I do like this or, you know, I don't really. Um, it also sets you up to be less disappointed by this feedback because you know it's coming. You know you've given an opportunity and you're asking for it. And so you're prepared. It might still sting if everybody says they hate it and you love it or they hate it and you know you just put in all kinds of time making something that nobody really likes but you can anticipate that feedback is coming and I think that is really valuable as well um, I also would suggest that you do this with even their favorite foods you have just made their favorite Kraft macaroni and cheese and you know they are going to love it ask for their feedback this lets you claim a small win. Oh look, mom does make things that we like to eat. Helps you feel a little bit better. Also, their taste buds change and they may feel differently about it. Maybe it was their favorite yesterday and today they kind of feel like, you know, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. Um, I think that giving them practice, giving you feedback and giving people feedback and thinking themselves and being mindful enough to think about it themselves, about foods that are brand new and foods that are favorite, their favorites, and constantly asking, is this still something that I like, is a really valuable tool for your family. Um, the other thing uh, that I wanted to remember to say about this, oh, is that um, you could do things like say, oh, you know what, I added something to this tonight. I added a little secret ingredient to our soup tonight. Can you tell what it is? Or say, I added cinnamon to this. Can you taste it? Doing this not only builds their language skills, uh, but it also builds their tasting skills, um, both of which uh, are really valuable for them to develop over time. So what does a feedback system look like, you know, for, for your kids? And it kind of depends on how old they are, of course, and, and, and that's okay. Um, I have a friend who, when her kids were younger, it was as simple as thumbs up, thumbs down, or maybe like here, 
This is a super simple, easy to implement, everybody can understand, and it has a lot of variability, right? Like it can be, ah, oh, yeah, it's pretty good, but if we did this, it would be awesome. So that is one of the most, most basic um, feedback systems you could use. Uh, we did this for a while in my house. As my kids got older, um, I would ask them whether they liked something or not, and then I would ask them to at least give me one descriptive term as to why why that was their answer. Was it something about the texture or the temperature or the flavor of the food? Um, did it remind them of something else? You know, I don't really like this because it reminds me of cottage cheese and I don't like that. Um, so using some additional descriptive terms is also a really valuable skill that can, again, build lots of other skills for them and be a way of providing feedback in, um, in, in pretty simple terms. Um, those are really the two, the two um, systems that I've used for collecting feedback. The one thing I will say, if my kids say, I don't like that, they have to give me at least one more reason, right? So at a, at a minimum, you can say, well, I, you can't just say you don't like it. I, I need a little bit more information. Can you tell me why? And then accept whatever answer they give you and let it go. So that is my... That is my bit for today. The problem with trying something new is that it is often, it can be, it's not often, but it can be met with either hesitation or just outright criticism. So rather than waiting for that to come and being disappointed in it, ask for it directly from your kids, from your family, from the people that you're serving. Say, what do you think of this? I value you, I value your feedback, and I would like it. All right, that's all I've got for today. See you again next week.